One of the defining moments for modern civilization was the ability to begin producing crops rather than follow a nomadic lifestyle or a hunter-gatherer type of an approach. As a part of that, tillage has been absolutely integral to crop production since the very beginnings of agriculture itself. There are a number of beneficial aspects to tillage. Uh, first and foremost, the ability to combat weeds, but also provide a seed bed that is appropriate and best suited uh, for crop planting and crop growth. However, we also face a number of challenges, uh, particularly from a soil erosion standpoint and from water quality from the sediment that washes off of these fields. Tillage has evolved over the centuries and began with animal uh, drawn agriculture and has moved now into the modern day mechanized tillage systems that we have now. In the mid 1700s the moldboard plow revolutionized our ability to till the soil, prepare a seed bed, and move to a much larger scale production system. For centuries the popular notion in agriculture has been that a successful farmer includes tillage to invert, to smooth, to level the soil, and to prepare the seed bed. However, in the 1950s, research began to explore the concept of reduced or minimum tillage as a viable alternative to conventional tillage. One of the foundations for the ability to use minimum till or no-till has been the evolution of herbicides uh, that are able to selectively control weeds uh, in the crop. This research really began to demonstrate the value from a soil conservation standpoint that a conservation tillage system would have. Uh, erosion losses can be reduced as much as 88 percent by the use of conservation tillage practices. The 1985 Farm Bill, also known as the U.S. Food Security Act of 1985, dramatically changed and enhanced the opportunities and the expectations of conservation tillage. The Natural Resources Conservation Service of the USDA uh, was tasked with scoping work and introducing compliance monitoring for conservation tillage programs on highly erodible soil. Producers with highly erodible soil or with wetlands were required to meet these expectations and compliance practices that were mandated. Growers were also allowed to participate in uh, commodity programs, USDA farm programs, but they were required to have an approved conservation plan by the NRCS in order to meet the compliance standards. Deviation from the plan meant non-compliance which jeopardized their funding opportunities through the federal farm programs. One of the major advances in allowing effective weed management with conservation tillage has been the development of transgenic glyphosate resistant crops. This herbicide is highly effective on a very broad spectrum of weeds and can be used very effectively in reduced and no-till systems either prior to the crop establishment or after the crop has emerged. The development of Roundup Ready or glyphosate resistant crops has dramatically impacted in a positive way the ability to use conservation practices and now the majority of many of the major crops in the United States have glyphosate resistant technology genetics. This graph demonstrates the uh, rapid and widespread adoption of the glyphosate resistant technology with now nearly 90 percent of the soybean acreage and well over 65 percent of the cotton and corn or maize acreage grown with glyphosate resistant. Along with the increases in adoption of glyphosate resistant technology have been the decline, the dramatic decline in fact, with other herbicides that are used. This graph shows that back 
prior to 1998 when glyphosate resistant technology was uh, was uh, brought forward that we had as many as 15 to 20 different herbicides that were used on at least 5% of the U.S. soybean acreage. In 2004, less than two herbicides on average were used on more than 5% of the soybean acreage. What this has done from an evolutionary standpoint has been put to put extreme selection pressure uh, on the weeds that are present for the selection and evolution of herbicide resistant weeds. Herbicide resistant weeds are now one of the greatest threats to agricultural productivity in the U.S. and worldwide. They are also a major threat to the gains in conservation tillage that we've experienced over the last 20 years. Probably the best, or we might say the worst example of that has been glyphosate resistant Palmer amaranth or pigweed uh, in Georgia. This photo was taken in a late season in a cotton field in, 19, in 2009 and demonstrates a complete loss of the crop based on uh, the presence of these weeds. These weeds, by the way, had been sprayed multiple times with Roundup and with other herbicides in attempts to control them and they were not successful, obviously. A number of species have been confirmed now with glyphosate resistant, including several of the amaranthus or pigweed species, two of the ragweed species, and three different grass species. Worldwide, 13 other species have also been identified with uh, resistance to glyphosate or Roundup. What we know to be certain is that in some instances tillage is an essential tool uh, for herbicide resistance management. However, the challenge that we have is how do we meet conservation goals while still being able to uh, manage these herbicide resistant weeds. What's highlighted is the fact that a programmatic approach is required or is absolutely essential in fact. With this in mind, the Council for Agricultural Science and Technology appointed a task force to focus on the balance and sustainability of herbicide resistant weeds management as well as conservation compliance. This group of weed scientists were, uh, represented all of the regions of the U.S. and has put forward a number of recommendations on how this can be managed. First and foremost, a number of best management practices have been identified in our report. Foundation for this is diversification of weed management programs. This means that we do not rely on one particular herbicide or one particular family of herbicides with a single mechanism of action. Rather, it incorporates a wide variety of herbicides that are effective as well as other practices such as mechanical weed control or tillage, uh, cultural practices such as planting dates and planting densities, row spacings, uh, crop rotations, and in particular thinking of things like a corn soybean rotation or a soybean rice rotation in which dramatically different systems uh, approaches are used to manage these weeds. With, from a herbicide standpoint, it also calls for utilization of all herbicide technologies, both transgenic and non-transgenic in nature, in tank mixtures, in sequential applications, and using soil residual herbicides as a foundational approach to these programs. Our conclusions, first and foremost, are that herbicide resistant weed management must be a high priority practice that's qualifying for land stewardship programs. To say that another way, herbicide resistant weed management is a program that can be approved within the conservation compliance programs if it is placed as a priority at the local and national level with NRCS and this must be done in order to be able to maintain the conservation compliance that we have been able to achieve in the last few years. There's full recognition that tillage is an essential tool for herbicide resistant weed management. 
However, it must be done in such a way that compliant, conservation compliance can be accomplished. This is absolutely critical and will require a broad community with a wide diversity of thought to be able to achieve. We also acknowledge that strong educational programs are going to be needed that demonstrate how herbicide resistant weeds can best be managed without losing the conservation gains that we have experienced and achieved in the last few years. At the same time, we also know that there is research gaps and that we need further research to be able to best meet the needs of balancing herbicide resistant weed management along with soil conservation compliance. For more information, you can go to the CAST website and download our, our issue paper and look at the recommendations that we have provided.